one of the great joys and privileges of the priesthood and also one of the great responsibilities is that people invite us into their homes and into their lives. And both Monsignor Kriegel and I have been blessed that this family has invited us into their homes and into their lives. For me, that happened well over a decade ago now when I was introduced to the, the Fisher family for the first time and was introduced into a, a world of soccer and confirmation classes and cross-country running and food, always food, lots of food. And literally dozens or hundreds of kids, didn't matter whether they were part of the family, sometimes I think they were busing kids in out of state because they heard there were nachos and other things available and Barb and Greg didn't really even know who these kids were half the time. They knew who theirs were and then there were others. And so those were days of, of great joy. And often as priests were invited into homes in times of celebration and joy, but also in times of, of sadness and, and crisis. And it was more in that light that I was invited into the home of, of Jim and Carol. And over these last few months as I've gone to visit them and talk with them, I have felt so honored and, and so blessed to have been invited into their home, even in the midst of Carol's sickness, even in the midst of, of sadness. Because I believe that, that suffering has the potential to weaken or even destroy love but it also has the potential to deepen love. And there's no doubt in my mind that in the case of Jim and Carol and the love that they had for each other, her suffering deepened their love. And I've told Jim that, that I've even used them as examples with young couples that, that I was preparing for marriage. That if this is this is what your heart is set on. I know two people who have lived it well, lived it very well. And so to walk into the home of Jim and Carol in these last months was literally to walk into the very presence of love. And scripture tells us that if we want to know what love is, then we look at the cross of Jesus Christ. And on that cross, as Jesus hangs there, we learn that love always pays a price. That there can't be love, real love, without the cross. And even though those of us who have been with Carol, who have loved Carol, have felt the pain of that cross, we know as well, and this is our hope, and this is the promise that, that we heard in the scriptures today, that, that the cross soon becomes the resurrection, and that suffering brings not death eternal, but life eternal. And what a consolation and a hope to know that in Jesus Christ, life does not end. And so the life that Jim and Carol have as husband and wife may be changed today, but it is certainly not ended. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have the promise of life eternal, that we are separated from those who have died, but not permanently, only for a time. And I often think of the death of my own grandmother, my mom's mom. And I was not there when it happened, but my grandma had been sick for a long time, and she had suffered from a stroke many years before, and she was paralyzed down the right side of her body. And my mom, as many daughters do, had the intuition that that night would be grandma's last on earth, and so she she woke up my father from bed, and, and they drove to the nursing home where my grandmother was, and sure enough, her breathing.
breathing was, was very labored. She was unresponsive. She was dying. But suddenly, as, as they stood there, my grandmother's eyes opened for the first time in days. And she went around to each person. There were a number of family members in the room. She went around with her eyes, almost as if to say goodbye to them. And my mother went over and she took my, my grandmother's hand, that hand that had been unusable for so many years. And suddenly, the fingers opened. And my mom says that her skin became like that of a, a little girl again. And then she died. And I think the Lord was manifesting right then and there the hope of resurrection. That in heaven there is no suffering. In heaven there is no cancer. In heaven is... As Colleen read, all tears will be wiped away. And so we may shed tears today, and that's as it is. This is a day of sadness, but it's also a day of great hope. That Carol has now seen the God of the universe face to face. And you and I someday will also see Jesus face to face. This Jesus who came not to condemn us, but to save us, and who wants us to know life eternal, life that gives us joy,